Okay. We have some wicks that we've made. Making wicks is relatively easy. We use an old, nasty, 100% cotton undershirt and we slice it into larger chunks. Those chunks we cut out three tassels and just braid. You have a knotted end and a tassel end. We have some sprouts that we sprouted. My preferred way of sprouting seeds is by putting seeds in damp paper towels in sandwich baggies. When the sprouts have their green leaves, then we can transfer them into a little pot of soil until we are ready to put them in the main planter. Aquarium gravel to cut back on the weird fungus thing. I believe this cold fungus has started to develop on some of our potting soil as the potting soil has been exposed to the fungus spores. As you can see with the aquarium gravel, there's no development of white cold fungus. We have our bottles that we prepared. This is by far one of the most labor intensive aspects about this project. First we have to clean the bottles, wash out the insides, and then I soak them in water for half an hour, a couple hours in the sink. Some of the bottles have a metal ring around the top. I have found that our sharp kitchen knife is the best as it's thin and flexible and can get under the metal. Then as anyone who's ever cleaned bottles before knows, you generally have to scrub. Whatever label doesn't peel off, I use steel wool or make a homemade gooby gone with one part baking soda, one part cheap oil, canola oil, vegetable oil. Afterwards, I rinse and wash with soap and let it dry completely. Cutting the bottles is also no easy feat. The bottles with the shorter necks, the stumpy necks, are make better planters. As you can see, we have a wine bottle, a champagne bottle, and an olive oil container here. The middle one has a long, slim neck, and generally those necks have to be cut back a little bit. There is a lot of variety, and even with this same style here, the same style of bottle, there's different sizes of bottles, which larger bottles make nicer planters. So to do this, I have to find the widest part of the bottle and then mark it with a Sharpie. After marking it with a Sharpie, I have to measure the distance from the top of the bottle to the Sharpie mark. I then take this top measurement and apply it to the bottom of the bottle as it'll be the perfect length for the reservoir. This will also be impacted on whether or not there's a dimple at the bottom of the bottle, which tends to happen with more expensive bottles. Then after candling for two minutes, we move it to an ice cube and do a corn cob buttering method. And hopefully this cracks it in the first try. However, this generally can take up to three rounds. I prefer this method as we're in Utah with a drought, so it uses the least amount of water. We do use, we do wear safety glasses and we have fire extinguishers nearby. This can be dangerous and is definitely advised under adult supervision. And we have some dirt. Okay. So the first thing that we're gonna do is put the wick in with the knot inside the planter and the, I guess, tassel end um, sticking out the bottom through the drainage. You want it to just stick out the bottom. And then I will loop the knot back down into the neck of the bottle and just sh shove it in there. So that way the dirt cannot get through. Okay, so now that's looped down there. I will fill it mostly with soil so that way I can put one of the uh, little sprouts in it to have enough room and to have a single layer of Aquarium gravel, this is kind of like eyeballing it. And we have 
have sage, basil, and thyme, but I don't know which one's which. So I think this might be sage. Oh, look at those roots. it in too much. It's forbidden fruity cups. <clears throat> we were talking about the different re the different kinds of gravel or aquarium gravel and like what we should use and we decided on these black ones because it's going to be getting cold in these, near, in these months and so hope, hoping the black will absorb some of the sunlight and keep the plants warm in the windowsill. All right that is our goal and then we'll fill it with water and I'm gonna have the husband help me do more. I think they uh, they look really good. Um, the bottles uh, are super pretty, and um, it's kind of like playing with the sprouts and getting them in this little gravel just feels like herb bonsai. Uh, so it was a lot of fun to do, um, and they they again they look really good in my opinion. Um, so excited to make more of these. Uh, the glass cutting. It was fun. Um, it'd be nice to have a bit more streamlined process. Um, a nice project that uh, we can just keep doing in the future and give them to people and stuff like that. Here we have all of our little planters that we had done today. Each of them have their own little style. One of the reasons why I kind of pushed to get this done is because we're not going to be home for the coming holidays and I needed to make sure our plants have a self-watering system that one of the biggest struggles with living in higher desert area is making sure our plants get enough water and so I wanted to pot these that way while we're not here for a few days camping um, they will not die <laughs>